Naruka Blade Point's newest showdown update is live, and we're kicking off Showdown 2.0 Deepwood with Chapter 5 of our continually expanding campaign mode. There is a ton of new content with this update, from new enemies and playable characters to soul jades and game modes, and a new pass with new cosmetics. Aside from the new additions, we've got boss mechanics to cover, quality of life updates, and more, so let's jump right into it. First up, we now have the long-awaited Yorohime as a playable character in Showdown. She comes with an ability similar to her Battle Royale first skill, where she can throw her spinning blade forward in any direction and teleport to it with an uppercut attack within the next few seconds. Her ultimate in Showdown is like her standard third ultimate, giving her three large damage slashes, followed by three low damage slashes, and Yoto can throw a spinning blade between big slashes to teleport to them for repositioning. The Yama's Abyss mode that we've come to know has had a massive overhaul. Now, Yama's Abyss has been transformed into a solo-only boss rush mode where you can bring your soul jades in for a quick boss battle and choose to advance to the next stage immediately after finishing, or you can choose to leave to end your current run. There's also an option to quick restart, which will immediately restart the current stage. This will make clearing Yama's Abyss much faster than before, but if you like the old format, don't worry. The old Yama's Abyss format has been made into a brand new game mode called Nerides Ruins, which has new and stronger anima rings than before, with many new changes to make it more enjoyable overall. This mode has four difficulty levels, with harder levels giving better soul jade drop rates. However, your soul jades, sense levels, and potentials have no effect in Nerides Ruins. Only your hero level bonuses will apply. Soul Jades cannot be bought from Rift Dealers, and stacking certain types of Anima Rings will grant unique blessings. Maximize your Sense Level grind by diving into Nerides Ruins today. Besides the pursuit of Sense Level, you'll also be leveling up the brand new Showdown Season Pass, bringing plenty of Showdown related rewards, including Martial Skill Cosmetics for Viper and Yodo, as well as Spear and Dual Halberd skins from the bosses in the new chapter. This pass contains 5 Shrouded Jades. These new items are used to add additional attribute slots to soul jades by combining three during imbuement. There's even an extreme item at the end called a flux jade, which will allow you to change a specific attribute of a soul jade into a random rare attribute. Additionally, seasonal quests have been implemented for campaign missions, Yama's Abyss, and Nerides Ruins, giving players more new and diverse ways to level up their showdown pass even faster. As usual, this showdown update brings players a ton of brand new soul jades to experiment with, as well as the new poison wielding power, which introduces an alternative to the familiar ice and thunder wielding. Poison related potentials have been introduced to the potential tree, and levels have been reset. This will give showdown players plenty to do as they test the new poison builds against the existing meta. Next, let's take a look at Morris Isle's new levels in Chapter 6, starting with Vibrations. In this level, you're tasked with clearing areas around chests that contain runestones. New enemies are introduced here, one being these dual sword wielding bomb carriers that will do melee attacks until they're low on health where they'll try to explode on you. One thing to note about this level is how you can easily knock the enemies off the edge, letting you clear these groups without having to go through their health bars. After three runestones have been collected, you'll continue on to the boss fight against Vinemire. On normal, this fight is incredibly straightforward with the boss having slow 1 and 2 hit attack chains. One thing to keep in mind here is that Vinemeyer's blue focus attacks cannot be diffused, only countered with parry. Other than that, his attacks are easily telegraphed, making this fight one of the easier encounters in the game. On hard difficulty, this boss gains some new attacks, but nothing too fearsome. Let's we'll start using a quick non-focus lunge attack and a blue focus charging rush. Remember to parry his blue focus attacks and defuse his non-focus attacks, as his blue focus attacks cannot be defused. Let's move on to the second level in Morris Isles Chapter 6 called Buried Giant. This fight pits your team against a giant floating collection of four faces, where one will be active at a time, and the active face will periodically shift to a different one after destroying the previously available floating platform. Each face uses a different element, with one summoning swarms of bees and shooting spirit faces, one shooting water balls and summoning spears, one shooting fireballs, fire slashes, and summoning lava explosions on the ground, and one summoning growing electric areas and shooting parryable electric nets or electric grids that are safe to pass through the middle of. Each face has a weak spot in the center of their forehead, and this is the only place you can deal damage to them. The Lightning Spear will periodically spawn in, giving you the chance to deal massive damage by aiming it at their weak spot and using its special attack. 
Anytime you deal enough Astral Aegis damage to stun the boss, a special platform will appear temporarily that lets you get close enough to damage the weak spot with melee for a few seconds. Defeating the monsters that spawn on the platforms will deal direct damage to the boss, with bigger enemies doing more damage than the smaller ones. Keep in mind, if the attacking face glows blue, the current attack can be parried. If it glows gold, then the current attack cannot be parried. With this particular wasp attack, even though it can't be parried, the groups of wasps can be shot before they come at you. The last level in this chapter is Culmination. This stage is a single boss fight against Omnius Bow. On normal, this boss will have some basic 2 and 3 hit attack chains and shoot ranged palm blasts that can be parried back at him for decent damage to his health and Aegis. This boss will have long attack chains and later difficulties, so getting familiar with his attack patterns is key to knowing when you can get damage in. Diffuse is useful against him, just be sure you're still ready for his next incoming attacks since a diffuse will not stop a boss's attack chain. On hard mode, he will more frequently mix his palm strike attacks into his attack chains. He may also summon balls of light that shoot high damage shards at players, or surround himself with beams of light that do significant damage on contact. Avoid this move by going over it. He'll also use 4, 5, and 6 hit attack chains, and he will throw a mix of focus and non-focus attacks in his chains. Note that parrying a blue focus palm strike will not interrupt his attack chain like a normal parry would. Once his health is low enough, he'll transform for the second phase of this encounter. Some of his moves to look out for in this form include stomping the ground in front of him with his legs, where he may mix blue focus attacks in with non-focus attacks, giving you good opportunities for both defusing and parrying. He has a slow wind-up swipe attack that targets one person, launches them in the air, and locks them in a root cage on the ground that does continuous damage for a few seconds. If the boss's Astral Aegis is broken during a cage, the cage teammate will be freed. And sometimes he will charge at you with a gold focus scuttle type movement. This should just be avoided at all costs. With all these things in mind, you should be able to take down Omnius Bow without too much trouble. This concludes our overview of Showdown 2.0 Deepwood. My name is Cyclops, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.